everyone. We're just going to wait for a few more minutes before we start. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Louisa Oliet and I'm a um, curator of talks and events at the Photographer's Gallery. Thanks for joining us this evening, um, this evening here in London. Uh, we're delighted to be here with uh, Linda Kole uh, Sabegwa, who is joining us from South Africa. Uh, using documentary photography, language, and the printed page, uh, Linda Kole takes his home country as a, point, a starting point to tell stories of personal family histories and wider social injustices. Today, he will talk through a number of different projects, including I Carry a Photo With Me, a body of work that he created for his sister, Zanyanda, which is um, being turned into a book that will be available later this year. Uh, Linda Kule is joined today uh, with curator Sarah Allen. Sarah oversees international art at Tate Modern here in London, and she curated displays of the work of Nan Golden, Irving Penn, and David Goldblatt. She's currently working on the forthcoming Zanelli Mahali exhibition, which is due to open this coming November. After their discussion, we will move to questions and comments from you. The event should last roughly one hour. Um, also, just um, to be aware, we're having some tech issues, so we just appreciate your patience with some of the, the delays uh, tonight. Uh, please also note that we are recording this, so if you do not wish to be featured, please turn off your camera. There will be time after the discussion for you to comment or ask questions using either the chat feature here on Zoom or um, using the raise your electronic hand function. So hopefully some of you are familiar with that. Um, and we will unmute you so you can speak. We are approaching this event in the same way we do all of our public programs, which is with the aim of creating a forum of trust and mutual respect. So please keep that in mind. I hope to just, today's discussion inspires you and we look forward to seeing you again here during some of our other planned online activity and even more hopefully uh, in person again soon at the gallery, which is now open. Thank you again for joining us. And now to Linda Kule and Sarah. So I think Linda's going to okay. <laughs> off yeah, with a presentation first, so. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa and Sarah. Okay. Can you start? Okay. Um, should I begin? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Lindo Sopewa, South African photographer, born and raised in Tragoza, a township south of Johannesburg. So I hope today I'm going to be able to convey as much energy and passion I have for my work. So yeah, I mean, for me, all of my, all of my work, it's uh, as much as it's, I photograph other people, but it's also about me. Uh, I began photography early on in high school. Um, in, uh, and and when, while I, when I began photography, uh, the first body of work I began with was a body of work Ted Nyaupe, which um, it's a body of work that happened through sort of an encounter with uh, a group of guys who I grew up with, who some of them I looked up to as like my role models in, in terms of dancing and, and sport, which is something that I was, you know, involved in before photography. So I remember, you know, because when I started photography, you know, I would carry my camera a lot in my neck and walk around and take photographs. 
Uh, I was like 17 years old at the time. I remember being asked by a group of guys who were kind of sort of painted as an outcast in my community, you know, who invited me, who asked me to come and take photographs of them. You know, and I remember sort of hesitant to go into, you know, their small shed. But, you know, at the end I kind of, you know, went there, I don't know what happened, but you know, I went there and I remember, you know, they wanted me to take photographs inside their, in, inside their shed. So I went inside and kind of taking photographs. I remember there were guys sort of like in the background because I was photographing two couples sitting on the bed. So in the background, there were guys who were kind of uh, smoking the drug. So it was my first time also seeing the drug. I've heard about it. So I went back again, you know, sort of proposing for us to do uh, photographic work. At the time, I was like naive and thought photography could change people's lives. And I wanted their life to, to change because I mean, these are like beautiful people to see them in the situation that they were in, it really affected me. So I went there, you know, sort of began this relationship of me wanting to photograph them. And I devoted, you know, for a, a lot of my life kind of photographing this. So in the beginning, you know, I'll photograph their daily base, you know, sort of how they smoke and, you know, things like that. Um, like less talking, just photographing, you know. Um, and yeah, they took me as like their younger brother, you know, because they protected me in some situations, you know, they, you know, they'd never kind of done anything to, to hurt me or anything. And I've learned a lot, you know, and how to approach certain situations. And, you know, I remember with conversation about, uh, you know, life in general and, and also sometimes uh, relationship problems, you know, uh, the, I'll get some good advice. So I kind of looked at how the daily base was, you know, and uh, kind of looked at my community, how the struggle was affecting my community and how it was affecting sort of their families. Um, some of them have children, how it affected their children, but most importantly, how it affected them, you know, physically, you know, and, and mentally. And, I realized also I could have been in the same sort of situation, you know, because I mean, the same, grew up in the same environment, whatever that is affecting them has affected me. And maybe I was lucky because I had a camera uh, or maybe I was resilient, I don't know. But, you know, I realized that I could have been in the same situation. And uh, because as we continue, uh, sorry, Louisa, maybe you can continue with the slide. I can like talk about it. So, so, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, Nyao Pe, it's a, it's a white fine powder, a very highly additive drug. Um, it's mixed with detergent powder, antiretroviral drugs. Um, you know, it's mixed with a lot of very lethal substances. So people either, you know, um, mix it with a joint of uh, marijuana or they smoke it through an injection, a syringe, and then they, and then that's how they smoke it. So, so yeah, I mean, I spend sort of a lot of time there. Um, at some point people thought I was also taking drugs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Nyope, I think has helped me also grow you know, as a person. And, uh, and, and yes, it gave birth to a lot of projects that I'm doing right now because, you know, in terms of what I'm doing right now, um, sort of looking, sort of inward looking, you know, and, and trying to create conversations around the work I create, not only in sort of gallery spaces or in publication, but also with the people I, I photograph because I, you know, I think that that's, um, that's one of the important stuff. So next. 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 So we can just continue. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Um, so at some point, because, you know, I was photographing these guys and, uh, you know, I mentioned, in, I mentioned it before that, you know, they were kind of sort of like the, the outcast in the community. So they're like the first suspect, anything that happened, they were the ones, you know, who they were, you know, were to blame. And one day one lady um, claimed that she was marked, she was robbed by them. So a group of guys came very angrily and they banned their shirts. So the shirts banned other, you know, 10 to 11 shirts, you know. Um, so now in terms of shirts, so, you know, the shirts are really near each, each other, you know, because of the space in Johannesburg, you know, given that we have also this past um, trauma of apartheid. So, you know, a lot of black people were placed in the township in very confined space. And you, so you get the RTP houses, which is the government houses, and you get, you know, the shirts for people who are maybe sort of trying to, you know, make, sort of trying to survive here, you know. So, uh, so this is was the shirt that I was invited in. And I, you know, one day, you know, saw that there was fire because they are like my neighbors. So I went there and kind of photographed it. So they were chased away from the community. So I spent like a lot of time on seeing them and decided to, you know, do, do other, to do other projects, you know, um, yeah. So, um, and then for a very long time, we sort of lost contact. Um, I didn't see what, you know, see some of them. And I began what I call it chapter two, Nyaube, um, where I was kind of looking for some of the guys and, you know, kind of trying to continue with this work. And at, and at this time I was sort of like, you know, grown as a person and as a photographer. So I wanted to create something very engaging, you know, something uh, collaborative, you know, and and I think this was it. This is an important work. It's it's still an ongoing project uh, for for me and for the guys because it's you know we that's where we kind of uh, get you know personal and, and and intimate about you know some of the stories that really affected the guys, you know, and some of them that led them being, you know, led them to, you know, start taking this drug. So I, I looked for some of them and unfortunately some of them have passed away at this point. Uh, and some of them, you know, sort of stopped smoking. Some of them just came from rehab. Um, some of them were still smoking, you know. So, you know, uh, we, we kind of collaborated in this, you know, um, I'll print out images and, you know, we sh you know, live with them sometimes, you know, with a small diary. So they could write, um, you know, some of their, you know, feelings, thoughts or whatever. So it became sort of this engagement about their lives and about, you know, some of the stuff that I think, some of the stuff that were personal. Next. So this was kind of this kind of collaborativeness, you know, we take, for example, an image of here. This is an image of, of, um, Manja and, and his father growing up, you know, and here he narrated that, that story, you know, uh, how his father being in prison affected him and leading him to, you know, to choose the life that he chose and that he wanted to reconnect with his father, you know. So, I mean, these kind of stories, I think, were important to start having that conversation with his father, for example, you know, and for other people to understand you know, and chapter two was not involving drugs or something like that, but it was more 
kind of intimate, you know, emotional, and you know, dealing with a lot of like psychological impact, you know, and so that's how it kind of began. So I mean, this, so this where also they write in 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 their home in their native language within the series. So I mean, this was a was something that we we talked about a lot in terms of, um, you know, what they thought about certain images, you know, and, and yeah, next, sorry. Yeah, so this is Segos, I mean, I could relate deeply with the story. Segos was talking about, you know, when he lost his mother at a very young age, you know, how that affected him. So, I mean, I could relate to those stories. Those stories are stories that everyone can relate to. You know, so, I mean, we can all be in that situation, you know. So, I mean, those are things that I wanted to bring across, I guess, also from chapter one to this chapter, you know, that, you know, it was, it was deep, you know, it was, it was something that was very deep and something that we had to talk about, you know. I mean, I like the saying that if you talk about something, you kind of break the cycle, you know. So, I mean, that's what I'm also trying to do, you know, also to my work. Uh, yes, next. <clears throat> yeah, so I, is the next slide showing up okay, Linda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so, <clears throat> um, so, 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 should we should we hop into questions maybe um i can kind of like we can have more of a kind of chat conversation or do you want should we keep going through the presentation happy for either we can um move past this part if you want to go back to it later or we don't have to talk about this particular project um Lindo, you out there? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all good. Maybe you can start with the other side and then we can uh, okay, well, end with, with, with that other project. Sorry, I just. Yeah, no, it's sorry. okay. Um, we'll start with Dale's side. Cool. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, I began their side as well, you know. So, so I mean, I, <clears throat> with all my project, I kind of see this kind of link, you know, from from one project to another, you know. So, for me, um, I get a photo with me, sort of, <clears throat> sort of gave back to. Delside. So Delside is a place that I kind of um, knew growing up, a place that uh, my mother used to, to work in, you know, um, as a, 
Had to sleep in, wake up. Um, and a place that I felt that maybe took my, you know, a lot from me, you know, first being my mother, because I only saw my mother like on, on weekend, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so Del side was, you know, um, a place that I was sort of not allowed to photograph in, uh, not allowed in, you know, growing up and at some point not allowed to photograph inside, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of found uh, my way to to photograph, which was, you know, to stand like, at a local supermarket, you know, um, and asked to take photographs of people and sometimes, you know, being invited in birthday parties here and um, sometimes working, I mean, sometimes, uh, <coughs> To, going to the pasta, you so saw it's a very like sort of a conservative place. So the religion, the the Christian, so a lot of them sort of you know go to church a lot on Sundays. So I thought you know going to church was like one of the place to begin that you know. So yeah, and then I sort of people got comfortable with me. So. I was also working with a, a close friend of mine, Cyprian. So we we worked a lot, you know, and kind of was to take photos of of, of of people. So I mean, the side for me was you know kind of trying to understand this community. And I realized when I was working with their side, because growing up, you know, it used to be like you know it's a sort of fantasy, you know, to see what's inside, what was hidden from me. So when I went there, of course, you know, as a community, like any other community that, you know, so faces some of the social <coughs> challenges that we were faced with in my own community. So, yeah, I mean, that's how it began. So you can continue. <coughs> Sorry. going to say maybe we can come to um i carry uh, her photo with me in a little bit but i really found it so wonderful looking through your powerpoint and you know seeing the kind of connections between all the series um especially love that comment she made like every project has a little bit of you in it um and i'd love i'm really curious about um your relationship building with um the people you photograph because it seems like in yaope you're photographing a community that, um, although you know the people and have grown up with them, um, it's not an experience that you have yourself. She's something very personal in I carry your photograph with me because you're talking about your sister. Um, to Dale's side, which I guess you're a little bit of an outsider to that community. So I'm kind of wondering yes. how, yeah, how you build relationships because you're obviously very, very good at it, very good at navigating those kind of different situations. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, thank you. But I was given a great advice by one of my um, late sort of hero um, in terms of how to navigate the site of subjects, you know, um, mm -hmm. or people that you photograph. Mm -hmm. So that 
one of the greatest advice was that you know go there without a camera and yeah. start 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 the conversation and you know come back again the other day and and see how comfortable they get with you and and kind of explain that and come back with the f- photos that you've made of them and to show them that this is how you see them basically <laughs> Mm-hmm. and and also for them to to know you you know mm-hmm. and to know why you're there so so yeah i mean with one project i think it differs from one project to another but it's it's kind of an, an approach that you know has kind of helped me a lot mm-hmm. in the long process but with nyaupe it was kind of an invitation and then mm-hmm. i continue inviting myself into that space but i was sort of sensitive also that you know the camera doesn't kind of create this boundary between us because i mean we are i, I saw me and them we are the same basically mm-hmm. uh, what makes us different is that i have a camera yeah. <laughs> and uh, so yeah I mean, that's basically how i create those, those conversation so from my career photo with me basically it was just carrying that photograph the cut out mm-hmm. photograph the one that you don't see this one, which yeah. was the same photograph that my mother used to carry as well Mm-hmm. Um so I mean I, 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 this is something that is I think affected me and maybe continue to affect me. Uh, maybe something was some kind of working <clears throat> better on. Um <clears throat> so I <clears throat> use the same photograph uh to go to the spaces that I knew my sister went, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and my sister you know probably met this person I went to a space that I've had, you know, from a conversation I've had with someone else that your sister, you know, went to this hostel, went to the space. Your sister, you know, went around. So my sister also kind of changed her identity in terms of name from one place to another. So, you know, in other spaces, she was not known as Yande. She was known mm-hmm. as, you know, another name. So, so yeah, I mean, it was that, it was that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of kind of, I think, with all the work there was a lot of kind of rejection or people saying no don't take a photograph of me yeah and a lot of people saying yes and maybe those who said yes they can decide later to say no and those who said no they can you know i mean vice versa so mm. it was kind of that so i mean when i began this project it was not a photographic story you know it was for myself sure you know um i come from a background of art in high school mm-hmm. so I mean I was fond of this idea of pasting writing um I, I, I never liked reading or writing you know um up until <laughs> I had to you know like to do that so I mean I will carry a diary and kind of photograph and you know paste and write my feelings or what is happening in that particular photograph so this body of work, of course looked at my sister's disappearance but also it looked at other um element that maybe led her to disappearing because mm-hmm. when my sister disappeared i mean uh it was when i hit by a car mm-hmm. in a long road in towards a called kumaru street um yeah i mean i tried to to put myself in my sister's shoes, you know, thinking that you've killed your own brother, you know, what 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 was happening to her. <clears throat> so um so yeah I mean th- this whole body of work was basically meant for my family to you know to start having those conversations you know uh and maybe to somehow break the cycle because in my family, this idea of people disappearing dates back from like yeah. during apartheid times. You know, in the sixties, my grandfather came to Johannesburg to work as a as a mine worker, and we, we never heard of, of him, or he never returned home. And later on, my mother, you know, which he recently went back to the countryside, which was foreign to us, you know, because we grew up here. In into into in in Joburg, you know. So, mm-hmm. and it's it's, um, so. 
yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, I really I'm sorry to hop in but I, um that's what really touched me about this project that it is something so personal um but it yet has this much broader kind of um it speaks to much broader subject matter of kind of a loss of family history that would be experienced by many um and even just like not having family photographs is something um that could be quite a shared experience so um thinking about that i was kind of really curious to ask you about the notion of healing and how how much this project might have healed you or or your family um yeah yeah well i think <clears throat> this notion of healing i think it's uh i mean healing versus talking you know um i think what has been helpful uh, i remember one afternoon we were you know together in christmas in my family i kind of brought that photograph here and if you look closely to this photograph of my mother there's a there's a small photograph there of of my sister mm -hmm. i mean that group portrait of 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 us that that we took in christmas and my photographic self decade today <laughs> uh so so um so i think healing was through having a conversation which it's a conversation that we were denied for for a very long time mm -hmm. because it was an uncomfortable thing to talk about you know and and because me i think it affected me deeply because of christmas when I mean, every time we have family gatherings, people mentioning Zianda's name, it had to do with me, you know, her, her disappearance, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I brought this photograph, you know, I, I realized, you know, the things were getting easier. You know, we, we could have a free conversation about this. And we talked about those um, memories, those wonderful memories we, you know, we remember of, us with my sister you know she was a really protective being you know um she was uh, really you know <clears throat> sometimes I quite required you know mm -hmm. and uh, so i mean <clears throat> it was amazing how we kind of spoke and about her without sort of mentioning her disappearing and her rebelliousness but we spoke about it in a humorous way so again you know this idea of uh talking about sign something and breaking that cycle mm -hmm. you know and 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 true talking about it you know this kind of you know some healing so mm -hmm. yeah i mean this also project helped me to understand a lot of things about you know myself and about uh, where i'm coming from and about um, you know um my family you know and mm -hmm. recently now i mean i'm in the villages i mean Mm -hmm. Eastern Cape, but now I'm in Monty because in East London because we had to connect. So I'm all, uh, uh, I'm visiting my grand, so I'm staying over at, at my grand's place. So it's really wonderful that we get to have these conversations and you know and yeah, I mean it's it's a great you know <laughs> place to be and to 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 learn about all of these things. And the text is really, um, really compelling as well. The kind of very, kind of diaristic, kind of confessional mode of um, kind of pairing text and image. Um, I wondered if there's any photo books maybe that you've looked at that you were particularly influenced by when you were thinking about this or, or are there any just general influences? I know Mapa Kang is the one um, that you've talked about in the past. Um, and yes. I, also, I also saw that, um, a fantastic, I don't know, you can confirm if it's true or not, but that when you oh. um, met, uh, showed your images to Moffa Ken, you told <laughs> you to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you can clearly photograph, but, but can you write? So um, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Sandro Fugero, you know, is, is like my, my hero. He's one of the godfathers of photography to me, him and, and, and it's called. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I remember like when, he, like I, 
I was like a, a high school student and I, you know, um, <clears throat> kind of asked to show him my work. Because I mean, I've known, I've, I've known about his work and, you know, I, 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 and immediately I was like a big fan, you know, that, of, that also he was like a black photographer <clears throat> and working <clears throat> during that time. So I organized to meet him and, you know, and, and he asked me to print those photographs before. And I remember printing like images that I thought were good, you know, trying to impress my hero, obviously. And uh, I remember he looked at my images quickly and he threw them down and he's like, um, Lindo, show me what you've written. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, I, I haven't written anything because I mean, to me, I was in high school. So I thought, you know, you don't have to read or write with photography, it's just taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, uh, sh are you, are you reading? I'm like, no. And then a pile of newspapers in his door. He said, uh, take those newspapers and go read. The next time, <laughs> the, the next time we meet up, show me what you've written. <laughs> yeah, it was, being a young boy, you know, I was sort of disappointed. I thought he was being mean or something. And I remember in the text, people were asking me, are you selling newspapers or what? And I was like, no, no, no. I remember throwing those newspapers somewhere in Job XBD and like, you know, I, was, <laughs> I, I didn't want to meet him again, but he, he was kind of preparing me of something, you know, um, was kind of preparing me of, of you know, um, yeah, something of which did catch up with me mm -hmm. uh, at the later stage. But yeah, I mean, he was a great, great hero. In terms of <clears throat> books that I've looked at or some mm -hmm. of the influences, you mm -hmm. know, I've, been, I've looked at uh, Jim Colbeck, mm -hmm. Raised by the Wolves, yeah. which I think was a wonderful book, you know. Um, and also uh, Larry Salt, you know, Pictures from Home, which I thought was like amazing, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> and yeah, of course, you know, uh, Chasing Shadows and mm -hmm. House of Bandage, those are amazing books. And of course, David Goldblatt, Boss Beck, really helped me a lot when, while I was working on, um, on Dell side. So yeah, those are, those are my influences and, and heroes. <clears throat> you kind of mentioned, um, I guess, Martha Kane, Goldblatt um, and Cole, and it kind of made me think a little bit about black and white versus color and kind of, you have this beautiful pacing where you kind of work between the two and bring them together. Um, how do you see that in relation to maybe the, a kind of history of um, South African um, struggle photography being, I guess, pri primarily in black and white, or maybe you don't see yourself in relation to that at all? Well, <clears throat> I like when I began photography, like I really you know, was into black and white, you know, um, of course that history of struggle photography influenced and they influenced a lot of photographers, I think who engage with the type of work that I kind of engage in. So, you know, like I've said, you know, Ernest Cole and, 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 and Santo Mufuke were like my, you know, early influence and the way black and white. So that work did something to me. But of course, you know, as I continued work, I kind of, you know, was in love with color all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I see my relationship with black and white and color. I see it as my wife and children. So, and of course, you can see that color and black and white, they represent different things. And, you know, I, I hope to, for, you know, when people look at it, look at my work, to not see black and white and color, but to see just, you know, photographic work, you know, and mm -hmm. this connection, which I try to make. And you can see it also in, ch in chapter two, Nyaupe, there's a uh, mm -hmm. black and white and color. I tried to be disciplined in Del Sight, but you know, I mean, I, I, was, I was, you know, kind of struggling to just stick in with, you know, with, mm -hmm. co with, with color. But the colors were amazing in Del Sight. The color palette was just so strong and, and, and it had to be color. You know, I had to distract you with those beautiful colors. Because mm -hmm. uh, if it was mm -hmm. black and white, yeah. 
yeah it, it really suits that series I mean it's so so striking the color palette um I find that fa that story fascinating as well kind of um you know your mother as a domestic worker in this community and then your return and, and, and you worked with a collaborator didn't you um on this yes That's yes cool. yes how was that yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> yeah so yeah I mean uh, I've worked with a collaborator and how we began basically it was you, you know um trying to move out of our comfort zone you know I've worked a lot in in my community so yeah I was trying to move out of my comfort zone and also my my friend Sipen wanted also to move out of his you know the comfort zone of photographing in Togoza so I suggested their side because of the history that I have with the place. So I thought this would be a perfect place for us to begin, you know, a new work or a new chapter. So we went there. It was really an amazing collaboration because, you know, somehow Cyprian is a white French um, uh, man from, yeah, white French man. And uh, me being a, a, a black um, man from Togoza. <clears throat> Um, in a way, when we're working together, we, we, you know, there was that um, energy that we feed off each other, you know, that pushed us to work in in the space. In I mean, in the side, because I, first year we got, got a lot of rejection. People were uncomfortable with inviting us into their into their space, and you know, the second year we were sort of invited. Uh, so, you know, sometimes invited ourselves into those spaces, but we'll bring and give people back the photographs and come mm -hmm. back the next day. They've decorated the photograph. It's on the, it's, it's, it's on their wall. But I mean, for me, I was also looking at some of the aspect of the relationship of race in their side, you know, um, because I mean, South Africa is a very divided country, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> You can see it clearly when you come here, and and it, I felt those energies that that I saw growing up when I visited their side. You know the energies of, you know, kind of the division between black and white. You know, I mean now it used to be dominated. It, it used to be white dominated area back in, in you know in the early two thousand. But now you know you see a mix of uh, black people and white people. Be uh, that beautiful farms. <clears throat> There used to be a circus there back in the days, uh, but now it was no more, you know. Uh, so, yeah, um, it was it was a great collaboration and we're working together now to produce a book. And that book will kind of show our relationship with our images, um, <clears throat> his images and my images, because we photographed more or less the same thing, but differently. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing how we kind of looked at things differently. So, yeah. That's really interesting. So the book will have both of your perspectives brought together? Can you hear me? Yeah. I, I was just wondering, will the, will the book have your images and... Um, okay. Might, might be a little lag on the line. Can you hear us, Linda? Yes, now I can hear you. Sorry, okay. I lost you a little bit. That's all right. Um, I, I was just wondering if the book will bring uh, your images and your collaborators' images together. Yes, it, it, it would be one book, you know, um, showing two images, you know, side by side, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, it will be a conversation between my wife and Cyprian's work. And um, yeah, and I think, you know, this kind of amazing kind of relationship that happens and the meaning between my images and his images, I think mm. it's so strong. So yeah, I mean, the book will be, I think, yeah, will be an amazing thing to kind of do that. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a really interesting angle for sure. Um, I wonder, um, Louisa, should we go to questions? Because I'm conscious that... Hello? Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can. Um, a couple, I think, have come through. Mm 
on the chat and you can actually post your questions directly. I think it's if you click on participants and then your own name, you might see the raise your hand function. Um, we've had some general comments from people. Uh, just one from someone who said that they imagine putting themselves online and showing your own struggles and vulnerabilities helps you connect with people and share their lives with you. So I guess it's a comment really in terms of how Lindo is able to build relationships with the people he photographs. Yeah, um, thank you. That's very nice, thank you. Um, there's another question here about, or comment rather about the presentation of the photos, specifically the spiral bound one in the middle. I'll see if I can find it. And how somehow for that person, it emphasizes the depth of the photo. And they're wondering about the decisions in terms of how you've presented them. Um, what was going through your mind really uh, when mm -hmm. you tried to represent them in that way. And now I'm gonna try to find the image because it stopped talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So if I'm hearing the question clearly, he's asking about uh, he's asking about the decision of spiral pound, right? Yeah. Of making the spiral. Yeah. So I mean, the spiral pound. Uh, first of all, it was just to connect those um, full spread images. That's one, you know, um, expert of it. And the another one was um, this idea of fr fragmentation which, you know, I'm talking about in terms of, you know, uh, the history of South Africa, which is fragmented, uh, my history with my family, which is fragmented as well, and my relationship with my sister. So, I mean, it kind of created, um, yeah, you know, something interesting as well, you know, um, just seeing one part of the image and the other part of the image. Sometimes it kind of looked like it's one image, but it's kind of the same image. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. To a book that's available later this year, is that right? This book, uh, well, <laughs> uh, this book, no, no, not this year. Um, uh, probably in the near future, it's going to be available. But yeah, not this year, because we made this, uh, we made 36 handmade books with a with an amazing team from David Crute mm -hmm. that have helped me to screen write all of this and also Madena I'm not sure if she's here yeah so we yeah we worked on this together go on Louisa no no you go on please I'm just going to hog with more questions, but I'm really curious to know what you're working on now. Um, and also kind of with the context, context of COVID, how you're, you're finding them um, kind of uh, just generally working, how, how it's all going. Sorry, Sarah, can you repeat that? I, I kind of lost you. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, no, I was just kind of really curious to know what you're working on at the moment um, and whether the kind of climate of COVID is naturally going to be causing um, many difficulties for you, but, you know, how, how you're managing that and, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm part of a Yopsod Masterclass, so through that I wanted to continue with the A Career Food With Me project. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I wanted to look at sort of the Eastern Cape, which is my ancestral land and where my sister was buried and where my sister grew up. So yeah, again, you know, kind of understanding this place and reconnecting with my culture, you know, my identity basically. And, you know, I'm also interested in this idea of migration, uh, you know, which I, is one of the things that has deeply fragmented a lot of, uh, uh, Black families, you know, dating back during the apartheid times, and you know, to the recent uh, until recently, that um, you know, people live to Johannesburg for opportunity purposes, and some will, will never return, and and sometimes they will 
not know who they are or their identity or their culture. And they will create their own culture in Johannesburg. So, I mean, that's what I'm interested in right now. And um, yeah, I mean, like I've said, I'm, I'm in the Eastern Cape. So that's what I'm kind of working on right now. It's exciting. And you, you had that um, the presentation at Houston, which we were chatting a little bit before we went live, which sounded fantastic, kind of maquettes. Um, how many did you say? 36, was it? Yes, yes, 36 editions. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, all thanks to Mark Sealy, who wanted to show this. Um, yeah, it's the first time I should have shown this project. So it was, you know, on a table vitrine. So mm -hmm. we showed all 36 books according to the narrative of the of the of 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 the whole book. So it was amazing to see how people will engage with the work and some of them could relate you know, with the work. And I think it's much better when people look at the book than, <laughs> than look at it online or, you know, I mean, the book is just amazing, you know, um, and how intimate it is. Absolutely. No, that's what I was really excited about because, you know, how you transfer the photo book into an exhibition on the wall or how you can make a photo book come alive is something I'm, I'm personally interested in. But the, the um, idea of creating all these maquettes and that people can actually leaf through them as you say is, is so intimate and I can only imagine was really really powerful yes yeah um, I think any other questions we probably have a little bit of time we have time maybe for like a couple of more questions or comments um no pressure <laughs> I just asked for clarification on something. Um, the collaboration, um, your collaborator um, for going into Dale site, was that somebody from the community or somebody else? And I wondered why you chose to do it as a collaboration. Um, I imagine if it was from the community, I can, I can understand that. Yes, uh, that's a good question. So no, it's not someone from the community. Uh, it's um, is someone from France who was my mentor. And so, yeah, I mean, we've been working a lot together in Togoza, my township. So we wanted to move out. So, you know, Delside was like the first kind of um, place that we, you know, I suggested and we went to. So, I mean, that's how we, 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 we collaborated. And, you know, again, our collaboration kind of created this, um, this powerful engagement of both our work, you know, um, not only as like a portfolio of my work and portfolio of my sibling, but the conversation that those work were creating, I think was much powerful. And also our relationship there, you know, just feeling of each other's energy to kind of push the work was, yeah, I think something very powerful. Thank you. Um, we have a question that came in. Um, about whether or not, um, just in terms of mentoring schemes and working with other photographers, are you mentoring other photographers yourself? And also in yeah, what context? Yes. Can you say a little bit more about um, what you're engaged in then? Yes. Um, yes, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm part of, of Soul and Joy a project which is a photographic project here in my township so every year they take like a student from grade 10 and then after my trip they uh, give them like uh, some bazaar to study further some of them have went to market for a workshop so i mean yeah i'm i'm engaged with that uh, project um in terms of you know teaching uh photography to to student and yeah, I mean, in future, I, ho I hope to do another sort of um, um, mentoring young photographers in my township, you know, like my, my close neighbors, you know. Uh, I've realized also that, you know, a lot of people were looking up to me and, you know, I just want to pass, you know, this idea of 
of photography, you know, everyone wants to take photography. So it will be amazing to kind of step that here. But yeah, I mean, I, I am engaged with, with, with the young photographers. Um, we have another question, some more of a technical one about whether or not you work with film or digitally. And is there anything else that you want to say about some of your, the technical aspects about your work? Yeah, I'm not too technical, unfortunately, but yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I predominantly work with film uh, and digital as well. So yeah, some of my projects, I work with both. So yeah, um, yeah, still learning how to use certain cameras and Photoshop and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Um, don't think there's any other, no? Okay. Last chance. Well, um, anyway, I think maybe this would be a good time to wrap it up tonight. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Linda Okle, uh, Sabikwa and Sarah Allen for the rich conversation and really for sharing, um, some more intimate aspects about your personal histories. And we really appreciate that, Lindo. Um, thanks Thank to my you. colleague, Anna McLaren, for the additional support, always. Uh, and lastly, to all of you um, for joining us this evening and for your ongoing commitment to the gallery. We really wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. Um, I've got you the polls. So we're not going to do an evaluation, so you don't have to bother with that. Um, anyway, I hope you are all okay. Uh, our next event is on the 10th of September, which is a talk with, our cur with the curators of our current show, which is on Jan Svoboda. Uh, if some of you've had a chance to see that it's next week um, and it closes later this month. So please keep checking our website also for other details on forthcoming program or for information on how to visit the gallery. Um, thank you again to our speakers tonight and hopefully see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Gonna go off camera now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>